In this episode of Flea Market Rescue, we're going to take this oddly painted tin pocket and turn it into a beautiful farmhouse display of flowers. We'll take this cheese lady box that I got and turn it into a beautiful wooden French box. And lastly, we'll take this plate that I got from the thrift store and we'll turn it into a beautiful farmhouse plate. So are you ready? Let's go ahead and do these projects. So I picked up this tin pocket at the thrift store. It was really oddly painted and it had some pretty ugly flowers in it too. First things first, we gotta get rid of this fake looking greenery and these dead looking flowers. Just look at this, someone painted it like a mustard color and decided that they were gonna go ahead and sponge some cranberry on there. This thing is screaming for a makeover. First, we're gonna start with my bare paint. It's a paint and primer in one and I use pure white. Now you can use whatever paint you want to use. I just use this because I paint a lot of furniture and this is the color that I use and it's the paint that I have on hand, but you can use whatever you want. So I'm just going to paint over this cranberry looking color and we're going to definitely need two coats on this. Now I've done two coats, I've let it dry, and now it's time to sand. We're just going to take some sandpaper and go over the high points. You want to bring out all that great detail in this tin pocket. It really is beautiful. It just needs for all that beauty to come out with some sandpaper. Do you see that? You see how nice that's turning out? That's exactly what you want. You want to be able to see, you know, the little flowers and the stems. Now, if you remember, in the summer, I went to Utica Antique Market and I found all those hydrangeas and I bought them and this is exactly what we're gonna use in our pocket. We're just going to cram them in there and kind of arrange them until it looks good to the eye. Now we're just going to go ahead and take a little of this buffalo check ribbon and we're going to tie it around the wire hanger. Now, doesn't that look 100% better? I love this, and I think someone at the vintage market is going to love it too. Now, onto the cheese lady box. So, I picked up this cheese lady box at the thrift store. It was like $4.99, and I already knew in my mind what I wanted to do with this. So, I'm really excited to do this project. We're going to start with some apple barrel black paint. We're going to paint this entire thing black because when we paint it white, we're going to want to see some of that black come through when we sand. Now you don't need to cover every inch of this box. Just mainly paint as much as you can with black because again, we're going to paint over it with white. We just want some of that black to shine through. Now, if you remember that little stool that we made, we used a Vaseline technique and we're gonna do this on the cheese box too. So you just wanna kinda dip your finger in the Vaseline and in various spots, you're gonna put Vaseline on the cheese box. You're probably wondering, why are we doing this? Well, the paint will not adhere very well when you have Vaseline, so it's gonna be easier to take off some of that black, and it just leaves a really cool effect. Okay, so we're gonna use my paint and primer again, and that's in pure white. And 
And again, you can use any kind of white paint. It's just what I have on hand, but any white paint will work with this. So I'm just going back and forth and I'm just trying to cover everything in white. This will require two coats for sure. While that's drying, we're gonna go ahead and make this little ornament, a uh, fleur de lis, I believe it's pronounced. We're using an IOD mold and we're just using a little cornstarch so that our epoxy putty doesn't stick to it. You wanna shake out any excess cornstarch. And then using this Magic Sculpt, we're gonna go ahead and create our piece. Magic Sculpt is a two-part epoxy resin and you have to mix both parts equal and then just kinda of play around with it for a little bit till it's mixed properly. I'm just smushing some of this epoxy resin into the mold. I have a full tutorial on how to do IOD molds, so if you want to look into that, I'll put a link above. And if that doesn't interest you, I do sell these in my Etsy store. Basically what you need to do is just kind of roll that mold back so that you can get that piece out of there. Just take your time, you don't want to destroy it, there's a lot of detail in it, so just kind of carefully roll that back so that you can get that piece out of there. I left this dry overnight. The next day I took sandpaper and I sanded the whole entire cheese box and as you'll see in some of the spots where I put the Vaseline it'll come up really easy and it just leaves this really cool effect. So you just want to keep sanding that and just really roughing it up giving it a lot of character. You especially want to get around the edges because that's where a lot of wear and tear would be on an old vintage box. I'm just finishing off the sides and I think this is looking really good. Now I found this image on the Graphic Fairy and I think it's going to look great on our box. It's free to use and you should check out the site because they have a lot of great things on there. Now I just printed out this on plain paper and now I'm just kind of lining it up with the lid of the box to the bottom to see where it's going to go in between. You want to just kind of crease it so that way you know where to cut it out at. Now in a cheese box, it has like this line in the back. So look for that line and then right across from it, that's where you're gonna put your image. Now we're gonna put this on by using some Mod Podge and that works really well. You're gonna just coat the whole entire area that you're gonna put the image on. And then after that, then we'll go over it with Mod Podge. This foam brush is not very good. Don't buy your brushes at the dollar store. As you can see, this one has so much, it's flimsy. Very hard to work with. Okay, now that we have a nice coat of Mod Podge, we're gonna go ahead and put our image on. Just run your hand over it, kind of get any bubbles that you see, smooth it out with your fingers. I'm seeing a few bubbles, so I'm just lifting this up and trying to get the air out of there, and I'm gonna smooth it down with my fingers again.
You might need to apply a little more Mod Podge to certain areas too, so don't be afraid to do that as well. Now that we have the image on the cheese box, it's time to put a little more Mod Podge, but this time on top. Again, you want to try to get this as flat as you can, so just use your fingers to keep smoothing it down. Now it's time to attach our floor de lis I love using Tight Bond. It is the best for furniture applique like this. So we're just going to put a little bit of glue on the back of this and then we're going to use some hot glue just to hold it in place until the tight bond dries completely. Now we're just going to go over it with a little bit of that white paint. Now it's time to age it. We're going to use some black wax and we're going to put that on the cheese box as well as the graphic. I'm just using a clean cloth to apply it. Now we're going to go ahead and use some of this Rangers Vintage Photo Ink. This is not only going to make it look old, but it's going to blend our label with the cheese box. So it looks more cohesive. I'm going to just keep wiping that ink in various spots just to give it a nice aged look. Isn't that looking nice and old? Very vintage.
we're going to work on the top now. Wipe some of that black wax, you know, on the ornament, around the ornament. Technically, you really should use a brush because you could get into the nooks and crannies. My husband moved my stuff around. I can't find my wax brush, so I'm doing the best I can. I do have a stencil brush that I'm going to use to get more in the nooks and crannies of it. Now let's go over everything with that ink. With a stencil brush and a little bit of black wax, I'm just getting in the nooks and crannies of that ornament. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of sandpaper and I'm gonna go over the raised parts of the ornament just to make that detail just pop. I think this came out awesome. It looks very vintage and just very cool. Now onto the last project. I got this plate at the Salvation Army, I think for $2.99. Using a transfer decal, we're gonna make this into an awesome piece of farmhouse decor. You wanna cut around the entire image, leaving about an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter inch around, just for handling purposes. Once you've cut out around the image, now it's time to pull off the backing. You don't want to pull the front part off. You want to make sure that you are pulling off the backing. It can be a little tricky because there's actually three parts to this transfer. There's the front part, there's the transfer which is in the middle, and then there's the backing. So make sure that you're pulling off the white backing and not the frosted cover. So carefully peel the backing off the transfer decal and that should expose the sticky side which we're going to put down onto the plate. After you put your image down on the plate, then you can remove the frosted front cover. Okay, now it's down on the plate and you can pull that frosted front cover off. With your fingers, you're gonna wanna carefully smooth out any wrinkles that you might have and that's it, that's all there is to it. I do have these available in my Etsy store. They're super cool, but you just gotta really take your time with them. And there you have it, we just made some awesome farmhouse decor. If you like this episode of Flea Market Rescue and you wanna see more episodes like this, Make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. I'm Kelly Sherry and this has been Flea Market Rescue.